What's up guys? Are you looking to get a winch installed on your Polaris Razor? Well today, we're gonna show you how to do it while using our Super ATV 4,500 pound winch and new body style Razor mount. So let's get right to it. You can do this installation without removing your front wheels and tires, but we're gonna do it just for ease of access. It makes it easier to show you guys what we're doing. So once we have both of our front wheels and tires removed, what we're gonna do is grab a strap, wrap it around the cage here. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect our front shock. And you just pick up on your rotor. Let's grab a hold of our shock, pull it up, and just tie it up out of the way. And this is just gonna give us more room to get in here and work. So we'll do the same thing for the opposite side. Then we're gonna come to this brake line right here. We're gonna get something that we can loosen this big nut because we just need to barely loosen it and then tighten it right back up. All we're gonna do is rotate our brake line. Once you've loosened it, You'll just want to roll both of your brake lines towards the back of the machine. And then just make sure you tighten it back up. So then yours should look just like this. Then we're going to get a pair of needle nose pliers and we're going to remove the clamp off of the vent line. This hose, you should just be able to grab a hold of it and wiggle it right off. So there we go, we got ours off. We're just going to tuck it right up out of the way. Another thing I like to do just to be safe so you know you're not going to damage anything, come right here to this clip, pop it open, and obviously you're not going to hurt the brake line, but you can smash your diff plug. So we'll come right up here to where the diff plug's in, pick up on the connector, unplug it and then just pull it right down through everything and then once we have everything hooked back up with our new winch mount in we'll just reroute this so we're just going to let this hang down out of the way that way we know it's out of the way we know it's not going to get damaged because if you do damage this then your four-wheel drive is not going to work next we're going to grab all of our winch mount hardware as well as our winch mount and we're going to go to the passenger side and get it installed and you just have to kind of angle it in just a little bit and then it'll drop right down into place. We're gonna be utilizing the factory holes down here as well as the factory holes here. So it should sit in here just like this. I like to get all my hardware started before I tighten anything though. So we'll come over here and we're gonna take our hardware. We're gonna line it up with the factory square hole and we're gonna take one of our nylock nuts and I just like to kind of sit it up there on the threads and then pull my bolt back just enough to where we can thread it right into that nut. Just makes it so much easier. And I'll just run that up a little bit. That way we know it started. Then I'm gonna come up here to this front corner and then I'll just continue putting the rest of the hardware in. It can be a little bit tricky to get in here to do this. Just feed your hardware from the back. Get it lined up with the frame hole. So after you wrestle it around just a little bit, you'll get it to where it's gonna line up with the hole in the frame. And you'll just come through and get your nut started. So it'll look just like that. And then we'll just continue installing our hardware for the rest of our two holes and then fully tighten all the hardware in an X pattern. So once we have our winch mount installed, I like to go ahead and reinstall the vent line for the diff. Get it on there. Let me reach through on the bottom side. Get your clamp on. And then you can just slide this vent tube back over to where it was. And now it's time to get our winch installed. So when we're installing our winch, we're gonna need somewhere to feed our winch rope through. So we're gonna come right here to the center panel on, again, the new body style razor. And we're gonna go down here on the bottom and there'll be a couple of torques. Just wanna go ahead and remove those really quick. And this panel will just lift right up and come right off. Then I like to grab the winch, click it in the free spool. We'll just go ahead and free spool out. 
a good amount of winch rope. We're gonna take our winch and get it up here in position. You can sit it down on the A-arm if you'd like, just anywhere it's gonna sit for a second. Take your rope. And feed it right out this hole. We're gonna take our winch, angle it in here, pick up on our radiator hoses. Remember to pull our slack. You almost have to kinda, you don't wanna break anything, but you definitely have to get a little bit rough. Winch is in. Just wanna get it lined up with the outermost holes because we are running the bigger of the two winches, or the two styles of winches, I should say. We just wanna make sure that we're not pinching any hoses. We'll get our hoses, our holes lined up. Then we'll get this hardware. So in your hardware kit, you're gonna have a bunch of bolts. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab these bolts. We're gonna lay a flat washer and a lock washer. We're gonna do this to all four of them. And then we're gonna get them installed to the winch. And I like to install my hardware in an X pattern. So again, we'll just find the hole and the bracket. And we'll just get that lined up with the hole and the winch. And then we'll just thread right in there like that and then we'll start the rest of our hardware and go ahead and fully tighten them. And we're gonna come right here to these four factory bolts in the frame. Just go ahead and remove them. Take the Fairlead adapters from the kit, line up the holes, use the factory hardware and fasten to the machine. Take the fair lead and Allen headed hardware and put it through the hole with a lock washer, a flat washer, and a nut on the back side, then tighten it. Grab our winch rope, feed it through our fair lead, then just repeat the steps for the opposite side. So once you have your hardware started and your fair lead, just go ahead and tighten your factory hardware here. And then you'll want to get an Allen wrench and a 13 millimeter wrench and go ahead and fully tighten your Allen headed hardware. And then we're going to grab our front cover. Obviously we removed our factory one. So we supply you with a new one in the kit. Slide your winch rope right through it. And it'll line up just like this. So down here on the bottom, you'll use your factory hardware that you just removed from the machine. So we'll let that sit like that. Then in the winch mount kit, you're gonna get some hardware that looks just like this. You wanna go ahead and remove that from the kit as well as go ahead and remove your factory grill. Once you have that removed, what you'll do, you'll come right here, you'll slide them through the hole in the frame and you'll take a washer, slide it onto the back side, and then you'll go ahead and you'll start your nut. So then we'll just go ahead and fully tighten our hardware. It'll be a 10 and a 10 up here. And we'll just go ahead and reinstall our grill. And then we're gonna come back up here, put our differential harness back in the clip. We're gonna route it right up through here. You can run it behind your brake line, up in between. It's a very good safe spot for it and then we'll just plug it right back in. So now as you can see, it's good. It's not gonna get pinched, hit, anything like that. So now we'll just make sure all our hardware is fully tightened for our winch, winch mount, um, winch mount cover, fairly cover. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and reinstall our shocks and wheels and tires, get the machine set on the ground, and then we're gonna remove the dash. So the next thing we're gonna do once we have our machine sat down is go ahead and remove the hood. And we'll grab our T40 Torx. We're gonna remove this screw here as well as this one. And then we'll remove this screw right here. And then one more on the opposite side. And then we're gonna remove both of these push pins. And remove our center storage compartment. If you have ride command on your machine, you'll have to remove just the backing of it, just the mount, and then your dash will pop right out of there. 
I'm gonna slide it right out of the machine. So now the next thing that we're gonna do is be mounting our solenoid. So the next thing I like to do, you don't have to do it, but it makes it a little bit easier on you, is to remove this storage box right here. There's two push pins inside of here, and then I like to go ahead and remove these two T40s. That way this plastic flexes back just enough to get that compartment out. So now we have some movement here. You can grab this compartment, slide it right out. So now we can gain access to this portion of the plastic right here. There's nothing that really interferes with the solenoid mounting in that position. It's kind of hard to mark exactly where to drill your hole, but what we'll do is we'll get ours drilled and then we'll take some measurements and show you where you need to drill yours. So we've already got one of our holes drilled. Again, we're gonna put some measurements up here for exactly where we drilled ours. We're just gonna line the hole up back here and then go up to the front side and try to make a mark. So right there, we got a little bit of a mark. Again, these holes do not have to be 100% perfect. You can drill a little bit of an oversized hole, which is what we are going to do. By drilling an oversized hole, if it is off just a little bit, you can absolutely get it in there. So now we'll just take it, line it back up. Our holes are lined up good. So just so you guys have a better idea of where you need to make your holes and your marks that will take a tape measure. So if you come to this corner right here, right before it rolls down, right there on the lip, you measure out, you know, approximately two and a quarter inches. You're gonna want to have that your center line. So then the easiest way to get a good measurement is to lay your solenoid down, measure from center line to center line on the holes. So you get about four and a half inches from center to center. So once you've done that, you'll be able to take a measurement from here down, which is about an inch and a half as well. So once you get this hole drilled, you just have to measure straight across your four and a half inches, which is the length of the solenoid. Then you're ready to get your solenoid installed. So I'm gonna mount mine with the screw coming up. So you just have to get everything in here. And you'll have to line up your screw with the hole. Slide it through. And you can kind of grab a hold of the screw there. Kind of pull up on it. And this will not make contact with the dash. So there's no need to worry about that. And we just do the same exact thing right here. So there we go, that's through. Flat washer, lock washer, and then your nut. And then if you would like to double check to make sure that your dash is gonna make contact, we could do that now. As you can see, that's gonna lay down, hit that. Everything's still lining up good over here. You can actually slide your hand in here and you can feel the gap. In your winch kit, you're gonna see that you're gonna have some yellow wire, blue, black, and red. So your red and your black, this is your hot. So this will go directly to the battery or on your bus bar to the far right post, which is an all time hot. Then your black, your ground, which is gonna to go to your center lug, which is your ground wire. This is your blue, which is gonna go blue on the solenoid to blue on the winch, and your yellow, which is gonna go yellow on the solenoid to yellow on the winch. So what we can do is go ahead and start taking these wires. And we're just gonna start feeding them down towards the winch. Now we're not completely wiring anything in just yet. We're just running them, we're just gonna drop them down in there. You know, we're not trying to make them neat just yet again and then we're going to go right here to the grommet on the firewall we're just going to feed our wires through once we feed them through we can grab a hold of them pull them straight up leave them lay just let them hang for a second we're going to do this with all of our wires we're going to make it nice and easy just continue feeding these wires through feeding the blue one through now we're going to take a red now this red, we know this is super excessive. 
for this installation. Some installations you may need all this wire. For this one specifically, you're not going to. So what I'm gonna do just to kind of mock it up, just to see, just to get a very rough idea of how much wire I need, I'm gonna cut it off about here. That way I don't have to deal with so much wire. Same thing for the black wire. All right, so now we have all our wires ran, but none of them are hooked up yet. You have a couple options on what you can do. Personally, I like attaching them to the solenoid first, getting them fully tightened. So on the solenoid, we can see we have a yellow stud, a red stud, a black stud, a blue stud. Okay, so here's a blue wire. We can go right here to the blue stud. We'll remove the nut. Lock washer. We'll take this blue and we'll just lay it on there. And we're just gonna loosely put them all on until we have them all routed exactly how we want to. That way we don't have any wires that are wanting to short off of each other or anything like that. So now we got the yellow and blue connected. Now we're moving on to our black as well as our red. So there you have it. We have all of our wires ran to the solenoid, how they're gonna be. So now we can lay them in there nicely. You know, and we'll probably end up throwing a zip tie around all of them and tucking them right here to where when they come out, that's all you're gonna see. That way it's nice and super clean. And we wanna make sure that we keep this right here at a point to where we can get a hold of it. So we're not gonna tighten anything yet on our machine other than these studs. And then we're gonna have a hot and a ground wire. So this hot wire and this ground wire need to go just like this. So your ground's gonna go to the center post. Your hot will run right over here to the hot post. The next thing we're gonna do is go through and remove all three of the nuts off of all three of the studs on the bus bar. And we're gonna take our hot wire, we're gonna lay it up here to where we need to connect. We'll leave just a little bit of slack and then we'll go ahead and cut off the excess. Do the same thing with the ground wire, leave just a little bit of slack. Cut off the excess. And then we'll go down here to our winch to where it's gonna to need to connect. I like to run them right down the frame rail. We'll run it over top of the brake line. This wire is gonna connect just like this. So we'll cut it off right here where my hand is. And then the blue wire is gonna run down the frame like that. Cut it off right here. Any excess wiring we can feed back into the machine. So in the kit, we provide you with connectors, wiring covers, heat shrink. You wanna make sure that you utilize the heat shrink on any connection that you make, as well as using your covers on any spot to where your connection may get dirty or covered in mud, specifically the winch. So once we get the wire skin, we'll make sure that we put a piece of heat shrink down. Then we'll take one of our connectors, slide it all the way up. Make sure we twist our wire up good. And then we'll just wanna crimp this onto this wire here, slide our heat shrink up, and then make all of our connections. All right, so now that we have all our connections made, everything's heat shrinked and looking nice, we are gonna start making our connections. The red wire from the winch kit is gonna go on to the far right post, and then your ground will go on the center post. 
So as we're putting these wires on, I'm going ahead and just putting the nuts on. And as you can tell, we're gonna have a little bit of slop of our wiring there. A little bit of excess. Just tuck it in there as nicely as you can. And we're gonna drop our yellow wire as well as our blue wire down. We know our blue wire is gonna go on our lower with the most farther, most farthest forward stud. The two washers, and then reinstall one washer, put your connection on, and then another washer, and then install your nut. Same thing over here for the yellow stud. We'll go through and we'll fully tighten our connections here. As well as our hot and our ground on our bus bar. So now we're just gonna take our winch rocker switch and slide it right through the cutout on the dash that we chose gonna run right through and then you can run it right up through here or you can run it down below that's totally up to you I'm probably gonna route mine down below I feel like it'll just look a little bit cleaner then we'll take our red wire and we're gonna run it just like we ran the rest of our wires right through the grommet in the firewall and right up here to our keyed on source lug on our bus bar Go ahead and make this connection and fully tighten the nut. And we'll grab this portion here and attach it to this plug that comes off of the solenoid. Just slides together and you just take this little nut, thread it down, nice and easy. So now all of our connections are made. Really quick, we can go ahead and check our winch to make sure it's functioning properly. So what we're gonna do is pull all of our excess harness through, get our winch rocker switch slid into the dash, and then we can just take all of our excess wire, just kind of roll it up in a nice manner. Something like this. And we can just run a zip tie right around the dash, or we can slide it back over here, get it tucked out of the way. Once we have all our wiring finished up, we're gonna show you how to install your stop block. So the stop block is gonna go on your winch rope just like this, so that the cutout portion is facing towards the front of the machine. You're gonna get your Allen headed hardware. You'll put a washer on one side, on the head side. And you'll slide it all the way through there like that. And you'll take your nut, reach in here. So once we have all four of them mocked up and together, You'll just take an Allen wrench and a 10 millimeter socket, and you just barely want to put this together. You don't want to tighten it too tight. If you do that, it's going to want to separate. Once you have all that tightened up, we'll grab our clevis hook. We'll pull the cotter pin out, as well as our retaining pin, and we'll slide our retaining pin back through, put our cotter pin back in, and just bend this cotter pin away from itself, and you'll just take your pull strap, slide it onto the hook, like this. Then one more thing we want to show you is you're going to get a wireless remote in the kit. You'll grab a hold of this tab right here. So once you've removed your tab, to turn on your wireless wrench remote, you're going to hold both buttons down. You're going to see the light's going to light up red. That means it's on. So if we reach in here, we turn our key on. Check this out. But whenever you're done with your wireless remote, all you'd have to do to shut it off is just hold your two buttons down, it's off, throw it in your console, put it somewhere where you know it's not gonna get covered in mud or anything like that. So what you're gonna wanna do after you have all your connections made, everything's tied up, looking great, you're gonna wanna go through, reinstall any of your factory components that you removed, your dash, your storage compartment, you know, all of that, get everything buttoned back up, double check everything, and that's how super quick and easy it is. Install Super ATV's winch and winch mount on this Polaris Razor. 
For more information on this winch or winch mount or any of Super ATV's great products, feel free to give us a call at 855-743-3427 or check us out online at superatv.com. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.